Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter. It's great to be with you today. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. As you guys know, I make my season predictions. I go game by game twice a year. The first time that I do it is when the schedule first comes out. The second time is after training camp and before the start of the season. I do this because I have no problem being held accountable. This is my fourth year covering the Raiders. The first two years, I nailed it. And last year, I was terrible. I said last year that the Raiders would go 12-5. and five. They clearly weren't 12-5. and five. Uh, It was much worse than that. And uh, I deserved all of the, you know, someone said to me one time, why do you mention um, when you got it wrong? Because it's accountability. And I don't mind telling you that. So I'm going to go back and go through each games because there are some changes. I said after that the season came out that I thought the uh, Raiders would win nine games if Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy for 17. Now, we all know that Jimmy's track record is that he doesn't stay healthy for 17. That's That's factual. I don't think even Jimmy would argue with that. I don't think he can. It's the reality. But what I want to get into today with you is, is I'm telling you right up front, it, the predictions are based upon it being a Jimmy healthy for all 17 because you can't predict injuries. And so if Jimmy doesn't stay healthy for 17, I'll give you another prediction there. But again, assuming Jimmy stays healthy for all 17, let's get right at it. Now, the very first game of the season coming up this weekend is the Denver Broncos. Um, I originally predicted the Raiders to lose this game. Now, you may remember me telling you this before, but Don Shula once told me that any win on the road in the National Football League is a steal. I mean, he talked about even the home team automatically starts with a field goal lead. Now, understand something. Since Shula's left the game, there's far much more parity in the National Football League. So if that's how one of the best coaches of all time looked at it before parity was so important, imagine what the game is like now. Now you have to understand I am approaching this being very analytical and I'm looking at teams. I'm looking at the other teams that we can't predict injuries down the road. What happens if, you know, whatever. So here is my prediction. I think the Raiders are going to go into Denver this weekend and win the ball game. I think that the Raiders are better on offense, and they were very good last year. In fact, I think they're much better. And I think they're significantly better in defense. Um, do I think they're a top 10 defense? No. Do I think that they are a top 14 defense? No. But I think they have the ability to get up to 15. But regardless, if they're in the teens, this Raider team is already automatically already better. Um, I think they go up there where I, I'm not sure that the Sean Payton, Russell Wilson marriage is going to work. I am not a fan of Sean Payton. I respect him. I think he's a very good coach. Um, I just don't like, he has spent this, his, his career. Let's just say this he, in Denver, you know, there's a lot of things getting out, a lot of things happening and, it's almost as if Sean doing what Sean does, which is self-protection, um, is setting the stage for the Broncos to fail. I think he's a very good coach. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's elite. I don't think he's Bart Parcells. I don't think he's Jimmy Johnson. I don't think he's Bill Belichick. I mean, I don't think he's any of the elite coaches. He's not Andy Reid, but he is a very, very good coach. And I think that they're going to be better offensively because he's going to call things that work with Russell. But I'm just not sold on that marriage. Now, maybe I will be, but talking to people who are there, um, who I trust, I just don't have a whole lot of faith. So we're going to leave it right there. I think the Raiders start out 1-0, and getting the win this weekend. Then they head to Buffalo next week. And I think this is a game that they lose. In Orchard Park, I think Buffalo is one of the best teams in the National Football League, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think the Raiders have the ability to compete there. Now, excuse me, to win there, I think they'll certainly compete, 
but I don't, I don't see them winning. Then you come into Sunday, the 24th of September, Sunday night football with the steel men of Pittsburgh invading Allegiant Stadium. Oh, there's going to be a ton of Pittsburgh fans there. But that's neither here nor there. You come out on Sunday night football. I think the Raiders win it, start the season two and one. Then they go to the Los Angeles Chargers the next week. I think they fall to the Chargers. Now, I'm going to say something. Here is how I do games. I have 10 cents of components for a game. And if it's 5-5, five, five, I give it to the home team. If it's 6-4, I obviously go in whatever direction is the sixth. Each game, I automatically give one point, not points as in like Vegas betting, but in my 10-point scale, to the home team. So to this Charger game, to me, I had it 5-5. Five, five. If the Raiders were playing in Allegiant, I would have picked the Raiders in Allegiant, where it still is playing at Allegiant. <laughs> Arguably even a better home crowd environment for the Raiders. But still, that's how I do it because there are things that go with travel and all that. So uh, an upset here would not surprise me. If the Raiders were to get to 10, this is this is where you steal one. And I know everybody gets angry at me when I say steal, but I'm sorry, I'm not a fan. And I'm, I, I'm analyzing this in light of what Adon Shula told me. Then you come to Green Bay Packers, Monday night football, back in Vegas. Raiders with the W. Listen, I think the, the I think the Packers are going to win the NFC Norris division. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube and Google NFC Norris. Chris Berman, you'll love it. Um, I think the Packers are going to win the NFC Norris. I think they're a good football team. And again, this is one of those things when I look at them and I look at the Raiders, and uh, I I go with the Raiders here. So after that win, be Raiders will be three and two in the year. Then the Patriots come to town for a, a, a big game at Allegiant Stadium on October 15th. I got the Raiders winning that one, and now it's 4-2 and two on the year. They head to Chicago, and that's going to be an interesting game in Chicago. I've got this one 5-5, five, five, just like the Chargers, so I'm going to go with the Bears because they're the home team, but by the skin of my teeth. By the smallest of numbers, I really believe in Justin Fields. Knew him in high school, covered him in, in college at Ohio State. Uh, great guy, great kid, great player. I, I think the Bears have committed quarterback malpractice with how they've treated Justin Fields. But I like the direction the Bears are going in now. So it's 5-5 it's five, five to me. This is another one. Now, remember last year, they lost several of these games. So all of a sudden now we could be sitting here looking at a Raider team, you know, and looking at them considerably different, considerably different. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden now you're looking at a Raider team that's five and two, if they can win this one or six and two, I mean, six and one, if they beat the Chargers. But again, I'm going to be practical and go and say they lose their four and three. Then Monday night football in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. The, the the Motor City. Love that city. One of the most underrated cities in the world. Detroit takes so much crap. I love that city. Uh, it's a great city. I've never not felt safe in that city. And just a wonderful place. Raider Nation, show up in detail, man. And I'm uh, really excited about that game on Monday Night Football. Now, I've got this game. Uh, interesting to me. I've got this Raider game. Again, it's six, four. And so with that, I'm going with the lions. A win here would not shock me to me. A shock win is when a team is eight, two, nine, one. And again, not talking about record talking about my, my 10 points of analysis. Um, and so again, I, I've got Detroit 6-4. I'm going to give them the win. But that a win by the Raiders there would not shock me. That would have them at 4-4. Four and four. Then the New York G-men come in on November 5th to Allegiant Stadium. And I think the Raiders lose this one. 
So that's four and five. Then on Sunday, November 12th, Sunday night football again, the New York Jets, New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Jets. Not a Aaron Rodgers fan at all. I know too many people that have played with him, coached, or been part of management. I'm not a fan of Aaron Rodgers. And I don't see Aaron. How many times? I mean, yeah, he got a Super Bowl. And he gets a lot of regular season wins. But I've had his teammates tell me, oh, yeah, it's never his fault. It's always somebody else. Aaron Rodgers wears thin on his teammates. Um, I've shared this story before, but it's such a good one. I one time asked Magic Johnson, Irvin Johnson, um, from the Lakers, Michigan State Spartan, go green. But I said to Magic, I said, Irv, can you explain to me, how do you define a great player? And he said to me, all a great player is, is a good player who makes the people around him better. I said, so he doesn't have an extra set of skill sets over a good player? He says, nope, other than he makes good players around him better. Aaron Rodgers does not do that. And I give the Raiders the win. Now I got them at five and five. And again, if they'd stole those other two, now they're seven and three. But I'm just giving you five and five analysis. Then Sunday, November 19th, down in Miami. Man, I can't wait to go down there. I love that part of the country. Going to skip out to Key West and have dinner and with my buddy, the great SI Fan Nation reporter, Alan Pupar, but sneak out there and and have some some dinner. And I got, well, it doesn't matter. And uh, But that's going to be a great game at Miami. And I've got this one five, the Raiders losing, going five and six. I've got two components. And so this is a 6-4 game for me. And if two is injured um, and there's some other injuries, I reserve that. Remember now, uh, each week I'm going to give you my prediction for that week. So this is one that I would not be shocked if a couple of injuries, the Raiders go down there and get that win in Miami. Then on the 26th, uh, the Chiefs come to Allegiant Stadium. I think the Raiders lose, but I think that game is super competitive. I think that game is very super competitive. Then on the third, uh, I guarantee the Raiders won't lose that weekend, by weekend. And then on December 10th, the Vikings come to Allegiant Stadium. My buddy Kirk Cousins is going to be there. I think the Raiders win and go six and seven. Then Thursday night football on Prime. <laughs> That's going to be a great game. Uh, it's at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. The Chargers come to town. Raiders win it. I got the Raiders uh, winning that one. So now they're seven and seven. Then Monday night football in Kansas City, the Raiders lose. That's seven and eight. They go to the Indians Colts on week on uh, uh, for the December thirty first New Year's Eve game. I got them winning that game on New Year's Eve at the Colts. They're now eight and eight, and then they end the season hosting the Broncos at Allegiant Stadium. I got them winning and going nine and eight. So there you go. That's that's my season prediction. Uh, again, nine and eight, could they steal a win and go 10 and seven? Could they steal two, go 11 and six? If they get 10, I think they're in the playoffs, 11 and six for sure. And remember that prediction is predicated on um, watching and seeing um, Jimmy Garoppolo being healthy for all 17 games. So that's kind of where I'm at on the season. I'm going to give you a, a couple of other uh, pieces of analysis on this team. Um, this was a very good rookie class. I've got an article coming tomorrow where I'm going to be um, grading the 2022 draft. We're going to look at that intently, um, look at some things. I think there were some very good positives in that draft and some really bad things in that draft. We're going to talk about what they were. But I think there are three things you're going to see from the Raiders this year that you've not seen in the past. Number one, watch the quarterbacks getting rid of the ball quickly. Yes, there are some passes 
where they got to hold it a little bit longer, but nowhere near what it used to be. And you used to see in the past um, plays that weren't supposed to be the ball held long and it would get held long. That's not, that's not happening. That dog don't hunt in the Josh McDaniel system. It's not the way uh, Jimmy operates. It's not the way Brian Hoyer operates and it's not how they're training Aiden O'Connell. You're not going to see it. That's a big one. The second one, and this is one that I think, you know, is, is very germane for a successful season. And I think nine and eight for the Raiders this year is a successful season is what I mentioned earlier with the defense, they've got to be able to get stops. They've got to be able to create stops. Now, I have another long-form article coming on Friday that's going to tell you how this team was built. It may come on Saturday, but I think it's going to come on Friday, of how this team was built. You're going to understand more about this. But the Raiders' defense doesn't have to be 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. I don't think they're there yet. They've got some youth in a couple areas where I'm concerned about depth. But they do, I do expect them to be when the season's over in the teens, 19, 18, 17, 16, maybe 15 at the very best. They get in the teens and they're getting some turnovers. That's what the Raiders need to win because here's the third thing. We know the Raiders have a very loaded offense. They're going to be good on offense. They're going to score a lot of points. So they don't need their defense to be great. They need their defense to show up. Now, if any of you think, so, oh, man, Hondo's talking smack. No, I'm not. I'm friends with a lot of these guys. And you, you heard Max Crosby talk about being tired of losing. They agree. This Raiders defense, I think more in the offseason next year with the draft and free agency is going to be addressed. That's why I think next year they're, they're a, a, a playoff team. I mean, I think they have to be. But when you look at this team, you know they're going to score points, which is my third big deal. And that's the thing I want you to watch for. But number two is the most important. The defense is has to be better. Now, we're not talking about a 100 times better. They were in the 20s. They got to get into the teens. They lost too many games last year that they had leads in because the defense couldn't stop anyone. I mean, there were times last year where the Raiders would have a lead and the other team would have the ball, and you're like, okay, this is over because they're not going to stop them. I mean, you literally knew that you got a better shot at a large pizza, supreme, extra cheese, extra onion, hyping hot, surviving an entire football game sitting next to me in the press box than the Raiders stopping anyone late in the game last year. Just the fact. If they were arrested for having been an NFL defense, there would not have been enough evidence to convict them. It's not the case this year. Now, they got to stay healthy. I mean, you lose a Max Crosby, that is a huge hit. You know, a Marcus Epps, a Robert Spillane, these are all huge deals on the defense. Huge. But you keep those three guys. Now, remember in baseball, they talk about in defense being strong up the middle, catcher, second baseman, her first baseman, center fielder. And Watch for my article Friday and Saturday because you're, you're going to see this. The Raiders got stronger up the middle. They got a Marcus Epps. They got a Robert Splane. We know what they have in um, Max Crosby. A lot of a lot of depth. Jenkins, Tillery, um, Bilal Nichols. I mean, a lot of depth there in the middle. The defense is going to be better. We just don't know how much. And to me, I don't think they have to be unrealistically good to get there. And so to me, that's that that's the biggest thing. Biggest three things. Watch the balls coming out quicker. Not every play, but most. Number two, the Raiders defense doesn't have to be exponentially better. They just got to go from the 20s to the teens. And that's for my prediction. And the third thing is, is you know the Raiders are going to score points. It's just going to be fun how. 
I believe 100% Devontae is going to have a monster year. Last year, he was targeted, I believe, 150 times right at it. Could have been 145, could have been 155. And there were significant amount of plays that were called drops. Where the ball, he didn't even touch it. Or it was way behind him and it hit a hand, but it was way behind him. The accuracy of the Raiders quarterbacks, does that mean they're going to throw every pass perfect? No, nobody does. But they're extremely more accurate. They're going to get the ball out quicker. I think Devontae is going to have a monster year. But I'm going to give you a surprise player on each side of the ball that I think people are going to be talking about when the year's over. Let's go to offense. This one's hard for me because I got two. Jacoby Myers, because Devontae's going to get a lot of double teams. He's going to get a lot of balls. And I'm telling you, if I'm Josh McDaniels, I'm telling Jimmy Garoppolo, anytime. Devontae Adams is in single man coverage. I don't care what the play is. I don't care what the down and distance is. Go to Devontae. Make them double team him every freaking play. I watched this guy against Marcus Peters, against San Francisco, against the Rams. No one can cover him. He is a generational talent. Single man, go. All right, that said. Um, but Jacoby Myers, because they're going to have to double team Devontae, is going to get a lot. And he had a great camp, as good as Devontae. Nobody was able to um, stop Jacoby. There was a couple plays where some people made good plays. But as a unit, nobody just stopped him. Going to be big. But here's the guy, Michael Mayer, that tight end. You may have heard me on Sirius. Um, I've been on multiple radio shows around America. Um, talking a lot about Michael Mayer. Josh McDaniels loves the tight end. He's going to fit big in this offense. Now let's flip and go to the defensive side of the ball. Let's talk about any surprise guys over there that I think when the season's over, a lot of people are going to be talking about, and there is. I'm going to give you a few, and then I'm going to make my main pick. I think Nesta and Byron are going to have big years, the two rookie defensive tackles. But because there's so much depth, I don't think they're going to get as many reps as you would think. But I would not be shocked if that's the starting duo going into next year. Would not be shocked. But I don't have either one of them as my surprise pick. You know, you go back. I think Chris Smith is learning. I think he's a future Marcus Epps. I think he's going to do a lot on special teams. I think he's going to make a lot of plays. But I, not him. Amari Bernie, I think, is going to going to really show that speed off and do a lot. Not him. I'm going with Jacorian Bennett. I like this kid, the corner. I like his style. I like his grit. I like his fire. I love the fact, I've told you this story, in all of training camp, every time he could, he was jumping and stealing reps. Anytime Devontae Adams was up, he wants to be the best. He wants to go against the best. He didn't care if he got humiliated. Walking back, he was it was like Devontae was the pied freaking piper asking him, you know, teach me, master. I am your Padawan learner for all you Star Wars fans. And then he would run over to Marcus Peters. Get, I mean, he was a sponge. I just love that kid. I love people that want to learn. I love people that like to learn. I like the people that want to dig and get information. And uh, that's my my guy, my surprise defensive pick. So there you go. There's my, my thoughts on the season. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And uh, make sure you're paying close attention because I'm going to have a, a, a really good article coming, a podcast coming later this week with some more, lots more super information. So for all of us at Sports Illustrated's Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, uh, part of the Fan Nation. We're also part of the Fans, Sports, Fans First Sports Network. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.